balance optimism with the hard realities. We entered the conference hoping that we would see the start of real engagement on agreeing the urgency and key elements of a climate transition by key stakeholders globally. And there's been some progress there. Despite some high profile absentees earlier in the conference, the joint declaration by China and the US on the collaboration to curb climate change was a much needed and encouraging announcement in this past event. It added to the broad scale of pledges made throughout the conference. We also welcome the topics of the constituent elements of net zero, just transition, and impact investing entering the main agenda and coming under scrutiny. After six years in the making, COP26 has finally provided us with rules for a new global carbon market. This market can play a role in assisting climate change by providing countries a clearer pathway for that private capital to start reaching their shores. That said, there were disappointments. There seemed a degree of inevitability about the late intervention on the final wording of the COP26 text. It felt like a hammer blow. The text is stronger than agreements coming out of prior COP meetings, but it lacks the specificity and rigidity that would ensure that we can meet a 1.5 degrees goal. Almost 200 countries agreed to a climate deal to avoid the worst effects of global warming, even though it did stop short of reaching the Paris Accord goals. But the changes of language in the last minutes from India and China regarding coal and fossil fuels, it was a setback. Many of the pledges also lack detail and they lack a legally binding element. While many of the pledges are also needing to be enacted in a very tight time frame to avoid a cumulative and compounding impact that would put the 1.5 degree target at risk. Also, the $100 billion finance commitment to developing nations remains elusive. There is a significant multiplier effect of every element of action and inaction in the next few years. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said that a 1.5 degree scenario is on life support, but it's still alive. And everyone can and must play a part in returning it to health. Action is needed today and it will require courage, leadership, and risk taking, including with innovation around newer financial models. As an example, expanding partnerships with some of the world's largest investors is going to be fundamental to scaling up financial flows to emerging markets for climate smart solutions consistent with the goals of the Paris Agreement. In these past weeks, we showcased two projects around development finance. The first one is a $3 billion managed co-lending program for private enterprises in developing economies in partnership with the IFC. The second one is a new emerging market climate action strategy in partnership with the European Investment Bank focused in private equity investing. Huge sums need to be invested to bring emerging markets along a Paris aligned trajectory. These public-private collaborations can help. They can help mobilize that required capital. <laughs>